if, if we can look back into creation, the first couple verses and, and chapters, um, if we can acknowledge that, that God created four basic relationships for us to, to live by, and if we can understand these four basic relationships, it will help us a little bit in our relationships with each other in creation and, and to God and, and with ourselves as well. So, um, middle school, go ahead and go with, with Caden, uh, sixth grade, to eighth grade and under. Um, sorry about that. So, so the, the first if, and foremost is, is God. This is a review. You should know that. I'm going to breeze right through this. The first and foremost is God. God created nature and then he created man. And then he commanded man to, to work the ground. That, that means there's a relationship between man and nature, how we're supposed to take care of it. And then he created Eve. Uh, but we, we, we talked about that last week, that that, there's, that, that relationship is so complex um, that we're going to spend the rest of our lives trying to figure that out. Right? That's, that's, that, that's how God in, instituted it. And then man has relationship with himself as well. So all these relationships plays a role in how we operate uh, on a daily basis, through our work, through our home, through what we do, um, and how we enjoy the sunrise and the sunset. However, we all want this to be perfectly in line with our lives, right? Everyone wants to get up and say, oh, the sunrise is awesome, um, the waves are nice, let's go fishing, or the sunset is great with no mosquitoes, those who live uh, west. Um, we, we want our spouse to come home just happy all the time, right? Ah, I'm home. And, then, and then as, as you come home, you wish your spouse would open the door and say, honey, I'm home, and jumps on you and give you a big kiss, and, and dinner is ready, and the kids are dressed. And in bed. How many of you guys wishes that? That I mean, every day. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. You're like, I kind of do, right? Um, that is lost, okay? That perfect Instagram relationship, it's gone. But that's what we all really want. But here's the cool part. Jesus says, for the Son of Man has come to seek to save what was lost or that which was lost. So here we are. Here's the true confession that, that following Jesus, the best we can is the how and the why we do what we do because it is the only way back to the garden to restore these relationships. Amen? So that's why we do what we do. So though we're talking about singleness or being single and the gift of being single today or, or you're preparing to be married, uh, these principle applies because that's how God created it. So whether you're single or not needs to pay attention today, just like last week, whether you're married or not, you need to pay attention because the relationships doesn't change how God prepared us, how we ought to live. So today we go with Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. Let's stand as we read God's word in reverence. Now, remember, when you read Genesis, they, they kind of bounce back and forth. Chapter 1, chapter 2, and chapter 3 are saying the same thing in just a zoom-in view. So chapter 1, it's like this broad view of creation. Chapter 2, it's zoom-in on relationship between Adam and Eve. And, after, and chapter 3, it's a zoom-in on the fall. So that's how that works. So you might see this a little bit uh, disruptive today. So Genesis chapter 2, beginning verse 15, it says this. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat from it, you will certainly die. So we're going to flip back one page, which is chapter 1, verse 28. The story is the same. It's just broken up into a, a poetic way. So it's, uh, chapter 1 is a little more broad. So chapter 1, verse 28, God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it, rule over the fish in the sea and the birds of the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. The word of the Lord, amen? Please be seated. How can I honor God with my life or specifically in my singleness? Well, the stage of life that you are in right now without a spouse, some of you guys are married and you're living like without a spouse, so your spouse will probably appreciate this sermon as well. But the holidays are coming. Oof. 
Thanksgiving and Christmas and family visits and you sit around the Thanksgiving table and you know what your parents are going to ask you. When are you what? Going to be Mary. Do you have anybody? Is she coming with us? Is he coming with you for Christmas? And then when are you going to be Mary? And the agony of that question, you know, your grandparents. When are you going to get me grandchildren? What are you doing? And this question worries you or brews in you during this time of the year. Aren't you married yet? <laughs> well, I got advice for you. These are some of the best answers you can give. When you are approached by these questions, I found them simply on Google. These are the top five. I, I picked four. I picked out top five, but as I was reading through this morning, I said maybe the four. So if you are approached by this question, the simple answer is this. I'm not single. I'm just having a long-term relationship with fun. That's what I'm doing. I'm not single. I'm just having a long-term relationship with fun. I love being single. It's almost like being rich. <laughs> I'm single because that's the way I was born, or I was born that way. Single life is great. You can do whatever you want, whenever you want, and you don't have to share your fries. That's true in Liz and I's relationship. You never touch Liz's french fries, ever. Doesn't matter how you feel or if she's leaving it there on the table for whatever days. Don't touch her fries, me and my kids, we know that. But here's the honest truth. You don't have to be merry either. And I hope for the next few minutes, this principles apply to all of you, whether you're in a relationship, getting ready to be merry, or just simply single. There's three simple points in this creation of the gift of being single from God to us, and I hope you get it. The first one is this. You're not single. You're in preparation. You're not single. You are in preparation. Listen to what God said. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and to take care of it. What did he say? He put him in the garden to do what? To work it, to take care of it. Being single is not a free-for-all, do whatever you want, be irresponsible, be responsible, sow your wild oats to not selling down. That is a lie from a sinful world from the work of Satan. Being single does not mean that you don't have any responsibilities. Actually, God was very directed, directive, directive, or however we want to say it, He had work instituted from the very beginning. And work before the what? There was work before the fall. There was work before sin came into the world. There's meaningful work. There's work that Adam has to take care of. This confirms to me, and I hope it encourages you, that the Bible was not written by man or men to control people. Because if the Bible was written by man or men to control people, if I was to write this thing, I would say, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and he created man, and man owns big boats. And man has to have boats and fishing rods, and that's all he's going to do all day is to go fishing. That's how I would write it. Because that would be a lot more fun than in the beginning God put the man into the garden to work it. Right away, God says, be responsible. Be responsible? Yeah, respond for what? Take, take, take care of it. Work it. He didn't say sleep all day, and he didn't say play video games all night or drink until you can't uh, walk anymore. He says, work it. Take care of it. Be responsible for it. The trees needs to be watered. The animals needs to be fed. The ground needs to be plowed and planted. Let me tell you a simple truth, and every parent in this room is going to agree with this, and all the young people needs to pay attention, and single people, before you can take care of someone else. This is every parent's dream. You need to be able to be responsible what God has put in front of you. Before you can take care of someone else, 
You need to be responsible for what God has put in front of you. Proverbs, it says this. Lazy hands make for poverty, but diligent hands bring wealth. He who gathers crops in the summer is prudent son, is a prudent son, but he who sleeps during harvest is a disgraceful son. Lazy hand makes for poverty. This is not a new thing, right? <laughs> Lazy people, your life will be in poverty. As simple as that. And here's the most attractive person in the room. You know what the most attractive person in the room is? A responsible what? Person. The most attractive person in the room is a responsible person. You have the opportunity right now, young people, single people. Yes, I know. This is painful. You have the opportunity right now to water your savings account. You have the opportunity right now to water your savings account, to put some money away. And all those who are older or, 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 or have children, <laughs> you're like, yes, please, tell them. Amen. You have the opportunity right now to water your savings account, to put some money away. Don't waste it on useless things. You, you have the time right now to, to work on your career, to get up, to get dressed, to take a shower, and you know what? To outperform your coworker who's been out all night and been drunk. That's the simple truth of being single, that God has put you in a position, you're in preparation. No one here ever hears this phrase, right? Let, let me introduce you to someone who is perfect for you. He is really irresponsible. No one ever said that, have you? No mom or dad's going to come to you and say, hey, listen, I want to introduce you to somebody who is really in, irresponsible, really good for you. Or, or no parents would say, I really hope my future daughter-in-law is it's lazy and directionless, right? No one ever. Start a savings account. Cancel some subscription that's on your phone. These are very practical things. God is putting you in this preparation stage of your life. Move your bodies. And man, learn how to cook. And you know what? Stop with the Uber Eats. Seriously. Just stop with the Uber Eats. It is a wasted money and it helps you to practice laziness. I'm not telling you that. God says that to you this morning. I'm not telling you. That's God's advice for you. Stop with the Uber Eats. There's an old saying. It's by a play, a play writer, George Bernard Shaw. And I heard this about me before as well. Youth. It's wasted, Gary, on young people. <laughs> or some would translate as energy is wasted on young people. The, the quote is suggesting that young people have a lot of energy and potential, but they simply just wasting it away, and they don't realize it. And in the, the quote, it's not intended to look down on young people. The, the quote was intended a reflection of those who are older and looking back at their own lives and looking the, at the lives around them that people tend to finally understand the time and opportunity they wasted once they are much older. I, I love wisdom. I, I love hanging out with people that are way advanced in their, in their career than I am. Because I'm preparing myself to be that. So in order for me to be that, I need to hang out with that. 
So I know how to prepare myself for that. I often counsel people and young people and whatnot, and I have this piece of paper in my desk. And we're talking with them about their life and their career and what they're doing, prepare for marriage and whatnot. And I often pull it out and I show them this. And there's a line. This is, um, this is the beginning of anything you want. Or today is the beginning of anything you want to be. So as, as a young person sitting across from me in my office and, and seeking advice or seeking help, I always tell them, this is going to be a painful process for you. But this is going to be the beginning of anything you want to be. God gave Eve to Adam after he did what? Put him in the garden to be responsible for it, preparing him to receive Eve. Which leads me to point number two is to eat from the fruit of your labor. Look at what God says. And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of the good and evil, for when you eat from it, you will certainly die. Your attention, please. Where did God say Adam can eat? Where? Where, where did he say he can eat? Anywhere. Anywhere in the garden except what? One. Right? Where can he eat? Anywhere. Where are those anywhere? The grounds that he's what? Been working on. So God says, you're going to take care of this piece of land. You're going to take care of this crop. You're going to take care of this creation. And you can eat from any of it. But there is one you cannot touch. So essentially God is telling Adam, you are going to eat the fruit of your labor. The fruit of your labor. Now, there's nothing wrong with living at home to save up. Because you have a, a future goals that you want to meet and you don't want to waste your money away. And your mom loves you and she doesn't care about that. Your parents love you, they don't care about that. There's nothing wrong with that. And you're contributing to the household as well. But there is something wrong if you are just mooching off your mama when you are capable of getting out there and get a job. Amen. And all the parents are like, yeah, please tell them. But Pastor New, my mom loves me. I know she does. She loves you very much. And she won't stop loving you even when you move out and get a job. I promise you that. Your mama will still love you if you move out of her house and get a job and be responsible. You know, the truth is you need to love your parents back too. By being responsible, eating from the fruit of your own labor. Hey, Pastor, how do you know that's wrong? You know how it is? You can't really... Explain this principle. But this principle is true is that if anyone then knows the good he, they ought to do and doesn't do it, it's sin for them. It's just simple as that. If you know in the back of your mind, I need to do some about this. I, I need to change something about this life that I'm living. I'm, I'm, I need to figure this. I need to look at my phone and maybe turn off some subscriptions that I'm, I don't need. Or I need to get rid of these things that I don't want. I need to stop ordering these things that, that I don't even use. And, and, and I need to go out and, and buy some food and grocery shop and learn how to cook and watch YouTube videos. You know that you need to do those things and you don't do it. The Lord says that is sin. You might think to yourself, oh, I'm not doing anything wrong. Yes, you are. You're not being what God created you to be, to take care of it, to work it. Why would God ever bless you with his son or his daughter if you can't take care of yourself? You hear what I'm saying? Why would God say, or here is this beautiful girl that he created for you when you can't even plow the ground that you have? God's not going to say, here is the beautiful man that I have created for you when you can't take care of what's in front of you. Let me introduce you to this future couch potato to my... said no one ever. Matter of fact, this was so bad in the Bible. Let me tell you, you're not experiencing anything. This was so bad in the Bible that God spoke through Paul as an advice... To the churches. 
This is what he said. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10. For even when we were with you, we gave you this rule. The one who is unwilling to work shall not eat. Parents, this is not a new thing in our society, okay? Or not a new thing that you're going through. It's actually, <laughs> they have their own problem as well. In the, we hear that some among you are idle and disruptive. They are not, they are not so busy, or they're not busy. They are busy bodies. Such people we command and urge in the Lord Jesus Christ to settle down and earn the food they eat. And as for you, brothers and sisters, never tire of doing what is good. This idea of you eating the fruit of your labor, it's a biblical thing. It's a grow-up thing. It's a mature thing. When I was 19, I... I don't want this to be financial advice, but when I was 19 years old, I took $1,000 and I put it into a savings account. And every year, I would, every month, I would put in 20 bucks, 50 bucks. Sometimes if I side hustle a little bit and make a little bit more, I would put in $100 since I was 19 years old. And once I got a full-time job, I put a little more in there, not even look at it. Six years ago, I was borrowing money from a man that I needed to put down in the house. By the way, this is the second home that I purchased in Boca. I sold the first one for financial reasons. But I needed down payment. And it dawns on me. I said, wait a minute. I put, I've been putting money away all these years since I was 19 years old. Now I'm 38 or 35. How old I am? I don't really know. Getting too old to remember. Now I'm 35. I said, my gosh, I've been putting this money away. I didn't even look at it. I went in, and I said, I need $32,000 to put down in the house. And the guy says, no problem. Is that all you want? I don't know how finances work. I don't know how interest rate works. I don't know any of those things. All I knew was this. Someone came up to me at 19 years of age, and he says, New, put this away, and continue to put it away, and you're going to thank me for it later. And that's what I did. Eat from the fruit of your labor. You have this opportunity to work the ground, to water it, to sow it, to turn it, to, to do the things that God is commanded and blessed you to do, and that's just not for young people, that's, that's for everybody. That, that principle applies to everyone. But specifically for young single people, you also have this advantage. Or single people in general, you have this advantage, the advantage of spreading the gospel. As God instituted, he says, God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over it. Uh, rule over fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves the ground. This is not just uh, applying to, to sex and reproduction. This is applying you taking care of creation and the ability that God has given you to advance and to create and to invent, which we spoke about that five weeks ago. God created us with the ability to, to, to multiply the blessing from God for you, it's able to work the ground, to creating an environment that our, our labor will, will produce more, to rule over it. But sin enters into the world, and we become self-centered, and we, we think that because I'm single, I can do whatever I want and stay out late as much as I want and blow money on, on the people that I don't like and, and impress people that I don't know and be indebted to people that I never even heard of. And then Jesus came along one day, and, and he began to teach us. And he says, hey, you know, the little that you have, invest it and multiply it. These are godly principles. And, and God says, look at the birds of the air. You see how they are being taken care of by me? And, and God says, give to Caesar what's to Caesar, and, and, and give to the Lord what belongs to the Lord. Those are all financial advice from God. And God says, I, I want, I'm going to take care of you, but I need you to be responsible with what I'm giving you. Whether it's five talents, ten talents, or twenty talents. Or one talent, or five talents, or ten talents. Whatever it is that I'm giving you, be responsible with what I have given you. And if you want me to give you my daughter or my son that I created this beautiful thing for you, to satisfy you, 
Take care of what I'm giving you that's in front of you. So he says the advantage of, of, spread, of, of, of being young and single is that you get to spread the gospel. You get to take God's command and, and move it forward. And this is what Jesus says. He says, when then Jesus came to them and, and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you to the end of the age. I don't regret being married one bit. I'm going to be honest with you as a pastor. I don't regret being married one bit. But I'm a man. Boy, I do miss being single as well. Not in the sense of not being married. I don't regret any of that. But I do miss the freedom. I do miss hanging out with the guys and then go and pick up and do whatever I want, whenever I want, however I want. I don't have that privilege anymore. But that's the blessing of being married. Married is where we have our own blessings. But there's an advantage to those who don't have families. Take advantage of it. You have more time, fewer bills. I promise you that. I promise you, you have fewer bills right now. And more energy. I promise you that. You have more energy right now than ever. To be able to spread the word of God. Imagine if you save up and go on a missions trip. I would love to send some able people from this congregation that doesn't have kids and spouse and whatnot to just pack your bags and, hey, I want to go. Yeah, you go. You can do it because I can't do it. I would love to do that. Some young college kids and say, you know, I want to serve the Lord. Can I go here? Can I go? Yeah, we'll help you. We'll help you go. You know, if you, 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 you can get to places faster. Here's the truth. Moms, you know this. Every Sunday morning or every day you wake up, it's a pain to get your children to anywhere on time. Amen? One of the moms told me this morning, sorry, my kids just wake up, you know, just mad, just mad about everything. <laughs> Young people, single people, you do not have that problem. So here's my pastoral advice, and you were to sit in my office and across from me and say, I knew I want to be prepared for this. Stop wasting money. Stop staying out late. Stop with the mindless shopping to impress the people you don't know and be indebted to people you never met. And stop with the Uber Eats. Amen? Honestly, look at the accounts on your phone on how much you're spending on these useless things. I recently told a young man, I said, you know what the greatest thing in life is? He says, what? I said, the greatest thing in life is the ability to give. Because you've been responsible with what God has given you. The greatest thing in life is the ability, the financial freedom to give. Because you have been, re been responsible with what has God has given you. And you invest it and you're responsible with it. And you grow it, you plow it, you, you water in your savings account. And I can't stress this enough. Stop with the Uber Eats. I'm not hating Uber Eats. That sounds like I'm so anti-Uber Eats, right? I hate to say this to you, but I will because it's Bible. This is Paul's advice. This is not a command. This is Paul's advice to single people. This is what he said. But if you do marry, 
You have not sinned. So Paul looking at marriage is like this, you know, maybe better not to be married. He says, and if you marry, you have not sinned. But if you, a virgin, marries, she has not sinned. But those who are married will face many troubles in this life. That's Bible. Mary doesn't make life easy. Paul even says, it's in the Bible, if you're married, you will face many troubles in this life. And he says, I want to spare you of this. <laughs> All the single people say, yeah, I'm so glad. How long, how long can I stay single? You can stay single as long as you want. You don't have to be married. But this is what he's warning. I would like you to be free from concern. An unmarried man is concerning, concerned about the Lord's affairs. How can he please the Lord, but a married man is concerned about the affairs of this world? How can he please his wife? Guys, you see that in the Bible. You don't wake up and thinking you have this golf date all day or you have this fishing trip all week. You don't wake up and say, what video games can I buy today? Married marry men, this is for you as well. When you decide that I want to take care of God's daughter, some things got to go. Some things got to go. He says, you, how can he please his wife? Your wife comes first. But ladies, I have a verse for you as well. Here it is. And his interests are divided. An unmarried woman or a virgin is concerned about the Lord's affairs. Her aim is to be devoted to the Lord's in both body and in spirit. But a married woman is in, it's concerned about the affairs of this world. How can she please her husband? You have a verse as well. You don't wake up and say, I got my girls day planned for the weekend, you know. Some of those got to go. Some of these girls that are always talking bad about this guy and that guy and their husband, those girls got to go. Some of these girls, why are you letting yourself tag down? Why, you know, why are you locking yourself up with him? Why, why are you tying? Those girls got to go. You have a verse as well. Your job is to please your husband. I'm saying this for your own good, not to restrict you, but that you may live in a right way in undivided attention to the Lord. I can't say that my marriage has been easy, or I can't say that the transition from being single to marry, it's easy. Every step of the way, it's hard. Right? Being single is hard. Being married, are, are, it's hard. So as we study these relationships, you see how God is preparing you to have somewhat a responsible life. Because every stage of life, it's hard, but it's also Wonderful, and it's beautiful when you serve the Lord. Amen.